headed to the gym. Been doing pretty good, kind of working out almost every day, or at least a couple times a week, I'm trying to get to the gym because I'm out of shape. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, coming in, yeah. Flex. I just wanna win, yeah. LA BB, who we running with, yeah. Two, two, three, three, I'm on 10 again, yeah. State your name. I'm not giving up on my MB dreams. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my studio. I missed my studio. I missed being in my studio. I miss my equipment. I just miss being here. This is my creative space. It's my safe space. It's where I feel comfortable. Also, I want to say that I'm just very thankful. Just found out that I crossed a thousand subscribers and I just can't believe that. I did not think that that was going to happen this year. The goal that I set was a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. In just a couple months, we got to a thousand. I want to thank you for subscribing. I promise, I know these videos haven't been all that great. I'm getting better at that. I promise I'll get better at it and the content will get better. The video quality will get better. I'm learning as I go through this. And I'm so excited that you're here with me. And when we get to a 10 million subscribers, which will happen in you know the year 2075, we're gonna have a party with whoever's left at that point. First thousand people who subscribe, we're gonna have a big giant party here in the studio. We can fit a thousand people in the studio. Thanks for sticking with me. Anyway, headed up to Boston tomorrow. I'm talking to all the school leaders for Boston Public Schools, going up there to talk to them, to help them kick off their school year. And one of the things that I wanna talk to them about is about a word that's been bugging me a lot lately. And it's the word empowerment. I feel like we're not using it correctly. I feel like that word used to mean something that was powerful and now means something completely different. Here, I'll give you an example. Define empowerment. Here's the definition of empowerment. Authority or power given to someone to do something. Authority or power given to someone to do something. That's the way the word is defined today. That's not how that word started. That word has been around for a long time. If you look at the word showing up in print, you start seeing the word show up in the 60s and then it steadily moves up and up and up. And if you look at the word in terms of search trends, although it feels like we're using this word a lot more lately, I see it in education, I see it in the business world, there isn't a significant jump in the usage of the word, but it feels like we're using it more. And here's what I think is going on. I think we're misusing a word. We're using that definition of the word when in reality, that's not how that word started. I don't think that that was the original intent of the word because the second definition for that word is this. The process of becoming stronger and more confident, especially in controlling one's life and claiming one's rights. That's what the word should mean. What we've turned that word into is, I have power. I am a business leader. I am a manager. I am an educator. I'm an administrator. I have power and I bestow upon you some of my great power, which by the way, I can take back whenever I want. And that's what I don't like about the word. How do you empower yourself? What are the things that you can do to empower you and not wait for someone to empower you? That's what I want to talk about. All right. Say hi. Do you see yourself up there? Say hi. No, you got nothing. Every night I'm going on the grid, texting back. I want you, hit you up. I'm on the other side. I miss you, miss you. Take you off. I came your way to strong. Cannot keep it low key. Got me drugged. Your pheromones hit the roof. Auto, your taste. It's really a bad reception out there. So that's the Uber line where there's like 50 people waiting and then here's the taxi line. I don't understand how come there's absolutely nobody in line waiting for a cab, but there's 200 people waiting for an Uber. That's just insane to me. Telling you that I need you, but you're off my radio now. Found myself in between the lines underneath your bed sheets. It started fun, but now I'm into deep into this flow. That was a cool little gift. The little things that count. Every time from me, I want you. I want you more. No. Why? 
Why, 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 why? I'm headed to dinner with a teammate, Iris, who I haven't seen in a while. She is the person who's responsible for Boston Public Schools, and she came up for my presentation tomorrow. That's a nice ride. Yeah, it is. <laughs> The way we define empowerment is a little bit evil. You have power and you are willing to give it, give it up to someone else, right? That's the definition that we're using for empowerment. Empowerment is a game. You have power and you are kind enough to give it to someone else. If you're an organizational leader and you're giving managers this empowerment power, you, you are empowered to power other people. What you're doing is giving them the opportunity to play a game, giving them the opportunity to demotivate people with that power that they have. If you're a manager, your job isn't to spend most of your time figuring out how to give power, who to give power to, how to take power away. That's not your job. Your job is to keep your eye on the big picture and understand where you're supposed to be going and then be a resource and provide support to those people that work with you, work for you, so that they can accomplish what they're good at. You have to spend a lot less time trying to figure out how to motivate people with empowerment and spend a lot more time focused on creating opportunities to let the people who work with you shine. That's, that's what you have to do. Empowerment also feels like one of these across the board strategies, right? I empower all my employees, as in one size fits all, as opposed to what your job is, is to understand who your employees are, who your team is, and then individualize different strategies for what they need. Which team members need more guidance? Which team members need more coaching? Which team members need to kind of make mistakes on their own? Which ones need a heavier touch? Which ones need a lighter touch? In other words, your job is to figure out what your employees need and individualize and customize strategies for how best to manage them. Hey, how are you? Not this way. Just finished dinner with Iris. Korean food. I, I love going out to eat with people and not telling them what I'm interested in. I want them to come up with something that they want to eat and then I want to try that food. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, the, the word empowering feels very limiting. It feels like you're granting authority, which by the way can be taken back whenever someone feels like they should. It's a very temporary thing and it feels like you're using this very temporary, very artificial thing to get between you and either the people that you work with or if you're an education leader between you and your teachers or if you're an educator between your educate between you and your students it feels very artificial like the elephant in the room you gotta it's a black matted ferrari that car doesn't make any sense in a city like this. Like you go really fast for 150 feet and then you have to stop again. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, instead of empowering someone, why don't you lead? Leading is harder, but so much more rewarding. Don't create this artificial barrier between people and the work they should be doing. You gotta let work be a place. You gotta let the classroom be a place where people can extend themselves, where they can push their boundaries, where they can reach beyond their even their potential that they understand. I mean, that's what you do when you're a leader. You don't grant people permission to do that. You create the infrastructure, the support structure for them to be able to do that. You create in education the scaffolding for students to be able to do that. How can I be clear about the vision that we're all trying to reach? How can I be inclusive of that vision to take everyone's point of view, their, their views, their positions, to together create a better journey towards that vision that we all believe in. Focus on creating the environment where people can be their best self. Oh no, I gave my heart away, went a bit too far, so wrong. All right, headed to the event. I talk here in Boston, and of course, I'm running a couple minutes late. Hello. 
are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm good. I like you already. <laughs> already? Yeah. All right, good. So this is one of the famous burial spots. Paul Revere, Ben Franklin, the people who are massacred in the Boston Massacre are buried here. One of the things that I was talking to leaders about was this idea of empowerment, student empowerment, teacher empowerment, and how really what we need to do is just get out of their way and get out of our teacher's way and let teachers get out of our students' way. I see a lot of the discussion about why we should be empowering students. Students already have a lot of these attributes that we talk about. For example, one of the things that you see as to why we need to empower students is because we can get them to love learning. No, students already love learning. That, that's how they're born. You, you think my four-year-old needs to love learning? She already, she doesn't even know she's learning. I'm uh, shooting a documentary on uh, Ben Franklin. Yeah, we now have evidence that he was a uh, space alien. Yeah, no, a lot of evidence actually. Yeah, no, go ahead, go through. They end up with a maker mindset. No, again, if my four-year-old says, let me do one more time, let me do it, let me do it. They, they already wanna make, they wanna do things. We're the ones who tell them to sit still and fold their hands and sit there. They wanna touch things, they wanna play with things, they wanna make things. Give them the tools to do it and then get out of their way. Ow, 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 I can't sit in that position for so long. The process of becoming stronger and more confident, especially in controlling one's life and claiming one's rights. That part of empowerment, I like. That's where the definition started. That's where we should focus. Because I think those words matter. It basically is saying, you don't need to wait for someone to give you power. Like the first part of the definition, someone in authority to give you power, whether that's a parent, whether that's a, a partner, a boss, an organization. What this part of the definition says is, no, this is your right. Part of the reason why people get stuck in their circumstances is because they're waiting for permission. They're waiting for someone to say, go do this. You're allowed to go do this. They're waiting for the change to come from the outside. When in reality, the change has to come from within. My God, I sound like a hipster yoga instructor. Why are you stuck in the job that you hate? Why are you stuck in the circumstances that you hate? Is it because real change requires hard effort? Is that why? Is it easier to complain than it is to actually do it? Maybe you like to complain. Maybe it builds community. You find other people who hate the things that you hate or complain about the things that you complain about and you create a community. There's a lot of loud trucks in Boston. You know, here I am picking the middle of the intersection. What did I expect? It's easier to form a community of hate than it is to form a community of positivity. I got to really sound like a hipster yoga instructor, but it's true. Here's the thing, and we talk a lot about this on this channel. Words matter. The way you phrase things matter. The way you think about things matter. You can't change your circumstances until you change the way you think about things. And you can't just stop on thinking about it. You actually have to do it. No try, do. Link to video. So what are your goals? Have you written them down? Like I've talked about in other videos, have you checked how you're doing against those goals? Have you come up with strategies if you're not meeting those goals so that you can meet those goals? How would you rate your progress? What do you need to do differently? This is all in you. This is all on you. What the fuck are you waiting for? Let's talk about things that you can do to get you in the mindset of empowering yourself. What's going on? You got a flat? Yeah. They're not flat. What's the noise? I don't know. Up to you. You want to go up to you. Something's going on with your tires, right? I told you, I drove from the protection. No, I understand where you I drove, drove from. I almost uh, half a mile and there was no noise until I got to the hotel. Yeah, it's, I think there's something wrong with your tire. I just, it sounds a little dangerous. I'd be careful with the car. Good, he has something wrong with his car. <laughs>
All right, so we're back in Phoenix from Boston. I wanna finish out this video on empowerment. I wanna talk about things that you can do to empower yourself, that get the empowerment engine revved up. For example, one of the things that you could be doing for empowerment is exercise. Like if you wanna run, run a couple of miles. Wanna swim, wanna play basketball, wanna play racquetball, whatever that is. The great thing about exercise is that if you do it on a consistent basis, you get better at it. I just started exercising again myself and it's been three or four weeks in and I'm finally at the point where I'm like, I'm not gonna die if I run three miles on a treadmill. The second thing that you can do is sleep. Getting your sleep, figuring out what your sleep cycle is. Everyone is different. I need seven, That's I don't need eight. Eight is too much, six is too little, seven is where my sweet spot is. Sleep is absolutely critical for your mind, your body, and your spirit, so make sure you're getting your sleep. The next thing that might be helpful is meditation. I really sound like some kind of hipster yoga instructor. Meditation is good. I never believed in meditation, but I've been doing it for a while now and it's, I don't go deep. Five, 10 minutes, I just try to clear my mind of any thoughts, I just blank sheet. Mm. The next thing that you can do for empowerment is to start something that you've been wanting to start for some time. That has nothing to do with work. Start something that you've been interested in. Oops, I just kicked the camera. For example, you wanted to start learning how to cook. You wanted to learn photography, videography. You wanted to learn whatever that is. Pick it up, start learning and get better at it and better at it and better at it. That's very empowering to be able to take something from scratch that you don't know how to do anything with. And then after some weeks, you can actually see the progress that you're making. That is empowering. So try to do that. And the last thing I'll say about empowerment is that you gotta surround yourself with positive people. It's easy to find negative people. It's easy to find people who complain and attach yourself. It's like magnets, like strong magnets. It's like, like these. This is a group of negative people. And this is you walking by. La 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 la, I'm walking by. I am a negative person. Whoop! That's what happens. It's a lot harder to find positive people. Surround yourself by people who, they walk in a room and everything gets lifted people who elevate whatever environment that you're in. That's how you can empower yourself. All right, that's what I wanted to say on empowerment. Hope you like this video. Use the comment section to leave your thoughts on empowerment. What are the things that you do to empower yourself? And what tips do you have for people so that they can empower themselves? All right, like, subscribe, share, and I will see you in the next video.